How do you know where to draw the line between toxic positivity and affirming self-talk? That's what I'm talking about today. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Today's video is based on a viewer question from Anandu, who says, can you do a video on negative power of fake and toxic positivity and overdose motivation. Thanks, Anandu, for your question. An emotionally healthy state is one in which you can experience and express a full range of emotions from happy to sad to mad to fearful. If you get stuck on one and eliminate others, you're not whole. Happy and positive thoughts feel good, but it's not the only emotion you have. We naturally want to eliminate negative emotions, and because of this, many people can grow up having trouble owning negative emotions and can feel guilty about having them. This guilt and shame over being negative can lead to toxic positivity. We can define toxic positivity as rejecting or dismissing negative emotions and replacing them with false reassurances. You excessively focus on the good side of things and fail to appreciate the true feeling that the person is experiencing. Here's how toxic positivity can affect the way you think or the way you interact with others. First, here's how it can affect you. You can avoid talking about or even thinking about uncomfortable feelings. You feel guilty when you experience negative emotions like anger. When bad things happen, you only acknowledge the positive aspects of the situation. And you admire people who are always positive and you aspire to be like them. Here are some of the things that you can say to others. No worries. Look on the bright side. It could be much worse. You can tell someone that who has suffered a tragedy, everything happens for a reason. Toxic positivity can be damaging on several levels. It damages relationships when you invalidate someone's feelings. It also can make the person that you're speaking with feel like they can't relate to you. If it's someone who needs your emotional support like a child or a loved one, it can make them feel even worse about themselves when they can't dismiss the negative thoughts like you expect them to. As for the effect on yourself, believing that you're not allowed to think negatively can make you suppress emotions that are real, causing those emotions to show themselves in other ways, like becoming anxious or depressed. Thought stopping is a therapy technique based on the psychological defense mechanism of suppression. With thought stopping, you intentionally cast aside negative thoughts and replace those thoughts with something positive. It turns out that the act of not trying to think about something makes you think about it even more. Also, stuffing negative feelings sends the message that the negative feelings are not okay to have and you need to act as though they don't exist. When you can't stop thinking that way, you feel worse about yourself. So thought stopping has fallen out of favor as a go-to coping strategy. By the way, suppression is different from the defense mechanism of repression. Suppression is intentionally blocking unwanted thoughts. Repression is where you unconsciously block unacceptable thoughts as a coping mechanism. You're not aware of and don't accept the thought that you're blocking. For example, let's say I mistakenly call my husband by his brother's name. I make that slip because I have a repressed romantic desire for his brother and wish he were my husband. I would never admit this or even believe that it's true because that desire is so wrong to me that my mind blocks it from my awareness until the thoughts pop into my dreams. But I digress. How do you break through this tendency to use excessive positivity either with yourself or with others? Here are two approaches. Number one is employ self-compassion and acceptance for yourself. Stress and pain are part of the human experience and we must come to terms with this. Coming to terms is allowing yourself to experience the negativity. One way to do this is a technique called affective labeling. Affective labeling is simply naming the emotion that you're experiencing at the time. If it's your nature to avoid feelings or avoid negative feelings, you'll wanna put it out of your mind. But research shows that attaching a label or a name to how you feel makes it feel more real and lessens the threat of the emotion. It's like it pops the balloon. Once you label the emotion, you have to give yourself permission to be in this state. And this isn't to say that you should live here forever. There comes a time to shift your mindset to something more adaptive. The way you make that shift is to focus on resilience. Resilience is adapting to your circumstance in the face of adversity. So you persevere despite the adversity. And persevering doesn't mean you pretend to enjoy it, you just accept it and work through it. Also, remember the negative and positive emotions are not mutually exclusive. 
you can experience them both simultaneously. You can be angry that you didn't get a promotion while you still enjoy your job. So that's the first approach that focuses on you with self-compassion and acceptance. The second approach is to focus on others by showing empathy and validation. You want to allow the other person to express their true feelings. Instead of trying to get them to see the positive, show interest in what they're going through. Ask questions, offer help. So instead of saying, look on the bright side, say things like, I'm sorry you're going through this. That sounds really difficult. How are you doing? You could even say, I wish I knew what to say. That tells the person that you're not trying to give the perfect response. You're just there to listen. They may even say, you don't need to say anything. I just wanted someone to talk to. Then you can follow up with, let me know if I can help. These kinds of statements feel accepting and validating because they don't dismiss the person's feelings as if their feelings are wrong or unjustified. You may say, what if the person is always complaining about something? Well, if the person is your friend, you can still meet them where they are. If they're not asking for your opinion, your role is just to empathize. You're not there to be their therapist or help them advance to a better place. The person isn't going to see the light just because you cut them off with a positive statement. The person has to be open and wanting to change the way that they think and view the world because they see the need for that kind of change. If the person says, I wish I could see things more positively and I hate being negative, then we have a different situation. Have them watch this video on finding meaning by doing things that you value and this one on processing negative emotions. Thanks for watching. See you next time.